Growing up, I can remember clearly certain times when I asked my mother outright, like, or maybe told her rather than ask, Mom, I don't think I'm a girl. Um, and I would state the reasons as being, Mom, my hands are huge. Mom, my feet are huge. Mom, I'm really tall. Mom, I have a mustache. Mom, I have a beard. Mom, I'm really hairy. Mom, I don't feel the same. I don't feel the same as girls. I don't like girl things. I'm not, like, I'm not female. And she would reassure me that I was and that women in our family are just different and that sometimes we feel like we're not something, but we are. And it's just, you know, that I'll, I'll grow into it and that I'll understand one day. But it didn't really work out like that. What up, FTMTV? Uh, this week's topic is a really important one. I'm excited to talk about it. Um, the topic is um, how we figured it out. How did we realize we were trans? Um, when we came out to ourselves, basically. Um, and like I said, I think this is a really important topic, especially for people out there who are questioning, um, unsure of their gender. Um, I know that when I was a youth, and even now, you know, it's, you're, oh, you're in this place of questioning. It's not forever, but um, there is a time period where it's so confusing and it's so overwhelming and it's just, it's good to have people out there who you can communicate with and kind of relate your story with. So let's get started. Um, for me, um, realizing that I was trans was not this like major kind of epiphany you know i mean it kind of developed slowly throughout my life from childhood on to youth to adulthood um there was a part of me that was always questioning and always unsure of my gender um and i think that part was <laughs> that major concern that i had most of my life was i think a mistake has been made like i'm trying i, w I would always try to um, pick out the parts of me where mistakes have been made. I can tell you a little bit how it was when I was growing up. Um, I come from a very kind of conservative Persian or Iranian background. And I'm um, Persian. In our culture, there are very distinct kind of female and Israel raised roles. as much female as possible. And um, as I grew up, though, I was allowed, I guess, a little bit of freedom to kind of choose what I like and what did not like. Um, I feel like when we enter this world as children, we <laughs> don't necessarily have a gender. Um, there are those biological aspects of gender, um, but or what it is to be female and male, but I think that we all kind of enter this world on a clean slate and we learn a lot about our own genders. Um, for me growing up when I was a kid, I didn't really, I don't think I really understood the difference between what it was to be a girl and a boy. I thought, I think I just thought that we were both the same. Like we're totally free of all of those stereotypes and as we look, grow and learn um, our gender, we we learn our gender basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, I totally, I totally believe in um, the nurture. I believe there are nature aspects um, of gender, but it's mostly nurture. So for me, although biologically female, when you're a child, especially female, you are basically a male. I mean, besides your gender parts, like your, you know, um, besides those parts, you know, you don't really notice a difference. Or at least it was like that for me. I can't speak for everyone, I guess. But um, there was a moment when I realized that I wasn't a boy. <laughs> and then a moment I realized that I was a female, um, in fact. Um, I meant like bodily, not... <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick. Um, but yeah, there was a moment and that moment was when this kid in my JK class showed me his dick, um, on the playground and he is like, pop, look at mine. Yeah. And he was like, show me yours. And I'm like, no, I... and just confused completely. Um, because I would have always been this masculine child. As a kid, I was always, um, expressing myself in masculine ways. Whenever we played house, I was always the dad or the brother. Um, I would always play with Ninja Turtles and action figures. I was always kind of a rough and tumble kind of kid. Um, 
a lot of my time growing up, moments I remember specifically are when I was hanging out with my dad and uh, like an older woman would come over and be like, oh my God, your son looks just like you. And my dad would be like, that's my daughter, all right? Like it would offend him in a way. And that's when I think that things became gendered for me. And when I say things become gendered, I know that's not the actual word for it, but that's when my parents start to pressure like femaleness onto me. Um, but I fought it. <laughs> Very much so, you know, like they would put like pretty shit on me and I'd be like, no, I'm not wearing this, the hell with that. Um, so I fought it a lot. When given the choice to dress myself and buy my own clothing, well not really buy it myself, but choose my clothing out, I would always go to the male section. That's just the way it was. Um, I've been dressing the way I've dressed that comes naturally to me since I was about like maybe nine or ten. Um, and that has caused a lot of confusion, I think, in schools and such like that, in social situations where people have asked me, like, are you a boy or a girl? I passed a lot when I was a kid. Um, I would have short hair. Not as short as this, but pretty short hair. Um, and then comes puberty, where you're just like, it messes up your entire world. And I think for me, puberty was a horrible time. Um, that's like my downfall in life. That's when everything started to go wrong. Um, when you go through those developing stages, I think that's when I knew that something wasn't right. Um, I was kind of a late bloomer, and um, I always just had this hope that I was a boy. <laughs> um, but the proving factor that I wasn't was when I actually got it. Um, that age time was like probably the worst for me and I didn't really understand why I had this desire to be more masculine and to why I enjoy being referred to as a male but I honestly I thought I was crazy I, I for the longest time thought I was crazy and a very rough patch of my life was between 13 and 17 um, that was a horrible time in my life where I was very depressed um, very introverted. It was a very awkward stage for me because um, you're going through all those developments, right, where your body is changing and I couldn't stop it. Um, I became very depressed. I um, was always questioning my body and what was wrong with it. I would go to my mother and ask her, like, mom, I think something's wrong. I'm really hairy. Um, <laughs> I am really hairy, but not as much, obviously, of guys on tea, but I'm pretty hairy, dude. Um, and I'm like, mom, my hands are huge. Mom, I have big feet. Mom, I'm tall. Mom, I don't think I'm a girl. And she would just reassure me and say to me that, you know, you are, you are, you know, you're just different, which was okay for a while. But <laughs> um, as I discovered my body um, and kind of discovered my sexuality during that time of puberty, I also realized that I was attracted to women, um, which was very confusing for me, um, very frightening for me. Uh, I was sure that my sexuality would cause the end of my um, acceptance in the world, within my family. Um, so I was a very depressed kid. I um, went through years, I would say, from 13 to about 18. I was um, incredibly depressed. I self harm. I had many attempts of suicide. I was in a very rough place in my life. And I don't think anybody's interested because even now it's hard for me to communicate, but even just like then, I couldn't talk, I couldn't explain what was going through me. Um, and then, I started to express my sexuality. Um, I found a gay community, which um, was very accepting, and I saw people kind of like me with it. So, it was interesting. Um, at this time, I didn't actually know what trans was. Um, I knew there were women who were butch and who wanted to be like men. But I couldn't learn the difference between a butch lesbian and myself. Um, for one, butch lesbians don't want things. <laughs> They're not into that. At the time, I thought I fit so completely into that role. I was like, here are people like me. You know, they want to be men like me. They want to be more masculine outwards. They want to act like men. They want to be rough and tough. They're not like there's a fine role that we play and that this is normal. I thought it was normal. But then they got to a certain point. Where I started to know which lesbians don't want to be men. And when I
when I think of myself in the future, I think of myself as a man, not as a woman. So these were parts of me that I really was confused about. Um, but I just thought that maybe there was something wrong with me. Um, later into research, and I think I came across this documentary one time, I forgot what it was called, but there was a man who was a FTM. And before this, I had known about men who dressed as women. I didn't know that they could actually sexually change. I mean, get sexual changes and go on hormones. But at that point, I kind of knew. So, 19 comes around. And 19 is when I come out to myself as my I'm like, this is who I am, this is what it is, um, but even accepting that, I still have a little bit of um, fear in myself that it wasn't possible, because, I mean, again, going with, I've never seen a trans person, I've um, never met a trans person, I've only read of the situation where trans people, and most of the time, it's empty myself that I wouldn't do it because there was no point to it, that I could never be a man like I wanted to be. Um, I didn't think it was possible, and I don't think at that time I knew what testosterone was. Um, so, um, like, I just didn't know where it ended. So learning trans was, what trans was, was a huge moment for me. Um, there was that click. But still, um, when I thought of myself in that kind of situation, I thought that it was impossible. And it was something fearful, because I thought that there's no way I could ever, ever be a man. There's no way ever that I could change my sex. And then, lo and behold, you know, years later, it's, you can. And I think seeing those results is when it kind of finally kind of came out. You know, that I can do this. You know, it's possible. I don't need to be unhappy. I can be the person that I see in the future. I knew that this was you know? something that I had to do. I knew who I was. I knew where I fit finally. And there was just this part of me that was like a little more complete, a little more, more at rest. That I didn't have to worry about what was wrong with me. I didn't have to worry that I was crazy anymore. Because um, there was a moment there that I honestly thought that, oh my God, I've lost my mind. And I am like psychotic, I need to be in a hospital because I'm crazy. Um, and I think that's one of the effects of not having a real community with trans people. Um, but I don't know. What I'd like to say to people out there is don't hate on yourself. If you have these thoughts, talk to someone. Don't let them build up in you like I let them build up in me. Because they'll destroy you. They will. They'll take parts of your life that you should be enjoying. And I don't want to ever see anyone in that kind of situation. I don't want to see any youth caught up in self-harm and all those things and hating who they are, you know? If you're questioning, go out there and seek the answers. Don't sit there and think for yourself and try to conceptualize what's going on in your head, you know? The reason we have the internet and all this information out there is to help people. So, you know, and for other reasons, but you, you should always seek help. I know it's hard to speak. I know more than anyone in the world that it's hard to speak, especially about feelings. But don't let it, don't let it get a hold of you. Don't lose your life to it. Don't, <laughs> just talk to someone, you know? Talk to me, talk to any of these guys on this collab channel. Collab channels on YouTube, ask for advice, Tumblr, everything, we have all these resources. Um, go to therapists, ask your doctor, don't be afraid. Sorry that I'm sick for this video. I'm glad that I'm not spreading my germs to you at least and that we can have this awesome conversation or at least you hear my side. Maybe you can tell me what you think though and we can continue this conversation. Leave me a comment. When did you figure out that you were trans? Um, did you have one of those big epiphany moments? Was it kind of like a slow development like mine? Let me know. I'd like to hear from you. And uh, yeah, just leave me a comment. Hope all is well with you guys. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for listening. I'll see you next Sunday. Peace out, y'all.